The vessels that comprise the circulatory system are divided into two circuits, the pulmonary circuit and the systemic circuit. The pulmonary circuit is going to carry oxygen-poor blood from the heart to the gas exchange surfaces of the lungs and then return that oxygen-rich blood to the heart, while the systemic circuit is going to transport oxygen-rich blood to the rest of the body and return the oxygen-poor blood back to the heart. Now each circuit is going to begin in one of the heart's atria. The right atrium marks the beginning of the pulmonary circuit, which I have marked in this figure in green. So you can see it go through the right side of the heart, leave the heart, head to both lungs, and then ultimately return to the heart. And the systemic circuit is then going to begin when that blood returns from the lungs to the heart and enters the left atrium. It's going to travel through the left side of the heart and then off to the rest of the body, eventually getting back to that right atrium and returning then to the beginning of the pulmonary circuit. Now in this lesson of the course, you are going to be responsible for identifications of the heart chambers, the great vessels of the heart, and the valves of the heart. And so we're going to begin by looking at our model that we have of the heart and then trace the blood through all of these structures. We're going to begin by following blood as it arrives at the heart and then enters the pulmonary circuit. So the right atrium is going to receive oxygen poor blood from the systemic circuit to three, through two vessels, through the superior vena cava and through the inferior vena cava. So both of those blood vessels are going to empty into the right atrium. Here we can see the openings from the superior vena cava and then the inferior vena cava down below. The superior vena cava is going to bring in blood from the head, the neck, and the upper limbs, and the chest. And the inferior vena cava is receiving the venous blood from the abdominal and pelvic cavities and the lower limb. So this oxygen-poor blood is going to travel from the right atrium into the right ventricle. And it's going to travel from the right atrium into the right ventricle by passing through this valve right here. You can see I'm putting my pointer through that one right now. Uh, that valve is the right atrioventricular valve. So it's between the atrium and the ventricle, atrioventricular valve. It's also known as the tricuspid valve because of the three cusps that it, have, that it has. Blood that's in the right ventricle is then going to pass through the pulmonary semilunar valve and into the pulmonary trunk, which is this large vessel right here. Um, this valve is referred to as a semilunar valve because it consists of three half-moon shaped cusps. Blood in the pulmonary trunk is then going to split and flow into both the left pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary artery. So blood in the left pulmonary artery is going to head to the left lung, while blood in the right pulmonary artery is going to head to the right lung. The pulmonary veins are then going to bring the blood back to the heart. If we turn this over, here we can see the two left pulmonary veins and the two right pulmonary veins that are located here on the posterior portion of the heart. And both of those are going to empty into this one chamber here, which is the left atrium. Let's go ho ahead and open up this valve, open up this hinge right here, and we can see into the entire left atrium. So there are the two pulmonary veins that are coming from the right lung, and then we can see the two pulmonary veins that are coming from the left lung. Once blood enters the left atrium, it has officially entered the systemic circuit at this point. Blood is going to flow from the left atrium into the left ventricle by passing through the left atrioventricular valve, also known as the mitral valve or the bicuspid valves because it contains two cusps, as opposed to the tricuspid valve in between the right atrium and right ventricle. Blood is going to leave that uh, right vent excuse me, the left ventricle through the aortic semilunar valve, which if I tip this down, you can see back there. Uh, the aortic semilunar valve is going to open and then allow blood to enter the ascending aorta. It is then going to travel from the ascending aorta into the aortic arch and then in the posterior side of the heart 
into the descending aorta. That descending aorta is going to continue through the thoracic cavity and ultimately penetrate the diaphragm and into the abdominal cavity. And that is where it's then going to begin to supply blood to the lower limbs as we're going to find in our next laboratory lesson.